talking about today is extremely important. And I think it comes at a time in our culture where there's two predominant false narratives that are killing us. False narrative number one is what I'll just call kind of the machismo narrative. And, and many of you, if you're my age or older, I would almost guarantee you grew up with this. Here, so if you grew up with a dad that was like, quit crying, suck it up, be a man, men don't act like that. Quit acting like your sister. All of that is machismo nonsense. Brothers, anybody grow up in that house? I think many of us can relate to this. I know that I can. I mean, many young boys these days are being raised to think that males are somehow created to dominate everything. I mean, that's our purpose. From birth, we watch our dads show us how real men lead. Sexual conquest, athletic prowess, no sensitivity, no feelings. We don't feel, we do. We beat our chest and we let the world know who we are. We drink cold beer. We drink protein shakes. We hit the gym to pump weights. I mean, it's all about image. It's all about status. We obsess over sports and we idolize sports entertainment. So often we base our leadership success on how much money we make or how much we provide for our families. I mean, we often lay on the couch, flipping the remote control uh, demanding that our wives serve us and demanding that our wives serve our kids and expect that this is going to produce anything good. I mean, this narrative produces men who think with brute force and violence as well as misogyny are, are masculine. And when men embrace this narrative, you know what you get? You get men like Harvey Weinstein. That's what you get. I mean, that is what you get when this narrative is, is the norm. I'm entitled. It's mine violent brute force, I take what I want, I get what I want, I'm a man. This is a lie. It's from hell. It's absolutely demonic. And sadly, our daughters and our sisters all over the globe, they bear the violence of this. And I know this is gonna be a little offensive, but this is the state of manhood, especially in America. I mean, this is why we have such a problem. I mean, essentially, we have a bunch of boys who think they are men. And what we have are boys leading homes when they have no idea how to lead at all because they don't know how to submit to the Lordship of Jesus. I mean, this whole idea of surrender, this whole idea of submission. No, not us, not us men. We would never do that. I mean, so, so what happens is men, they, they feed off of what society is giving them rather than following God's design. The result, I mean, look around. It's not hard to see. I mean, being the man is destroying our world. But it's not the only false narrative. The other false narrative, and this one is predominantly if you're 30 and under, is that there is no difference. There is no distinction between the man and the woman. It, it doesn't, there's nothing for the man that's not also for the woman. It flattens out gender makes it fluid and teaches that there's nothing distinct that a man is called to and nothing distinct that a woman is called to. It's just that we're humans. So this is an absolute lie. One thing that I want to make very clear is Satan, the enemy who is his prowling around like a roaring lion looking to devour and kill, hates two things. First, he hates a righteous man. I mean, a man that pursues God, a man that pursues righteousness, a man that pursues an upright life, pursues a life of surrender and humility. Second, he hates masculinity. I mean, just look at the world currently. I mean, what is true masculinity? I don't, I don't think any of us can even define it anymore because the world has perverted this whole idea of what it means to be a man. So let's look at what Satan attacks. He attacks the home. He attacks family. He attacks marriage. He loves to bring divide. His goal is to get the man out of the house. I mean, he knows if there's no man in the house, this goes against God's intention for family. It leaves women vulnerable. Hence, why you see the problems you see today. I mean, why do you think there is such a push for feminism? I mean, look at what we see on TV now. The commercials, secular music. I mean, all of it is designed to lull you to sleep and program your mind to accept this message that, that isn't godly. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm all about females being elevated. But the way feminism is currently being pushed in our society is a direct reflection of the war that's being waged on marriage and family. I mean, the worldly idea of feminism is not 
elevating women. If anything, it's just playing on the emotions of people and the end result, it's more divorce, more young people going to prison, more abortions, more drug use, more suicides, more homosexuality. I mean, do you see the trend here? I mean, when men fail to hold up their end of the bargain for what God has designed for them, it causes major problems, devastation. I mean, it causes devastating problems. Sadly, men have no idea what God has for them. Because our songs and movies and shows, they're trying to get you to buy this lie. The distinction means inequality. That's not true. Difference does not mean not equal. It just means different. And what Paul's writing to the church at Corinth here is, hey, act like a man. This literally translates, play the man, which I like. Play the man. And, and he's making a distinction here. Don't act like a woman. Don't act like a boy. Don't act like an animal. Act like a man. Act like a man. I mean, what does it mean to be a man in biblical terms? Well, I think 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 through 14 states it perfectly. Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. And do everything with love. So what exactly is Paul saying here to you and me? Paul is putting all these commands around the imperative to act like a man. So what does it look like to be more than a male, but a man? First, be on guard. Pay attention. Don't be silly. Be serious. I'm not saying be crusty. I'm not saying be grumpy. As men, we should be ambassadors of fun and joy. I'm just saying don't be silly. You know who's silly? My seven and three year old boys, they're absolutely insane. I love them, but I'm not about to put them in a position uh, to build or to lead or to execute anything. Men, they're not silly. They're serious. They're full of life. They're full of joy, but real men know where they are going and they understand the stakes that exist in their home and in the world. Second, we need to stand firm in the faith. I mean, this is one of the most important commands in this verse. So Paul's not saying stand firm in your discipline, stand firm in your willpower, stand firm in your abilities. No, he's saying stand firm in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we are either prone to shame or prone to arrogance. When we fail, here comes the shame. When we succeed, what do we do? We beat our chest. Jesus, my friends, his work alone is what we stand on. When we do this, we are grounded and we give Satan absolutely no foothold. I mean, how many of us have bought the lie that strength, not being soft, not being weak, not struggling is somehow masculine? I mean, when we stand firm in the faith, we have the strength to own our weakness. We admit our neediness. We admit our brokenness. Here's the truth, my friends. We have been programmed to fight failure with one of two things, withdrawal or aggression. I mean, who suffers when this happens? Usually, it's our wives and our children. Third, be strong and courageous. I mean, what does it mean to be strong and courageous? It means we need to keep leaning into Jesus. We need to keep trusting in Jesus. We need to keep getting back up. We need to keep believing in the grace of God. I mean, you are going to fall short. 100% it's happening. My friends, in your failure, you will reflect the gospel if you're able to be strong in Christ. If you're able to be courageous enough to own your failure, if you can admit your weakness, I mean, that is the secret sauce. Lastly, do everything with love. The motivating force of biblical masculinity is love. I mean, think about how different this is than the macho worldly man message and that gender flat message. I mean, this is radically different. I mean, the motivating force for biblical masculinity is not your physical strength. It's not what kind of job you have or how big your bank account is or how far you can throw a football. I mean, it's not how, how scary you look when you're mad or your hobbies. It's love. My friends, it's, it's love. This is what makes the engine run. And we have it twisted. And this is the lie that we've been allowing the enemy to tell us for, for, for years. And we've been believing it. Man, our world, it's suffering. And I believe it's suffering most because of us. Because we fail to own our roles. And I'm telling you today that you need to, you, you owe your wife, you owe your kids, you owe your family something. 
You need to open this book and find out what God has to say about being the man. It's absolute opposite of what the world tells you. And you need to do it today.